be the vehicle life manager on that fantastic vehicle, the 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata. Now, in terms of the great strategy, this is basically the same as the spin. Um, we have a sport, club, and grand touring, and they have kind of the same roles. The sport being kind of the entry model. Now, in the past, uh, with the third gen, the car's been running for a while. So we needed to update it. We needed to add things that people just expect to have in the car, whether it's an $80,000 Mercedes or a $15,000 Hyundai. People expect things like Bluetooth connectivity. People expect things like USB ports, um, daytime running lights. So we just updated the car with things like that. But then we added some cool features and standards as well. The previous car had a five-speed manual as the entry transmission. This comes with a six-speed standard. Also, the LED headlights are really cool. Um, I'm sorry, standard feature. Not only is it superior from an illumination standpoint, but the compact design allows us to do some really cool things with the front end of that car. And both Jack and Dave will get into that a little bit more. Now, a little word about the pricing. Um, the Sport starts at $24,915. When we announced that pricing, there was some concern that, well, this car is seven, eight hundred dollars more than the previous gen. How can you do that? Well, if you comparably equip a third gen car, like push button ignition, Bluetooth, LED headlights, um, you know, all the equipment that are upgraded. The difference in price is actually tens of dollars, not hundreds of dollars. So we've worked very hard to keep the value there and keep that starting price below $25,000. Um, the club remains our more aggressive, sporty variant. This model here happens to be a club. The way you can tell the club from the other models, as before, darker wheels, darker mirror caps. Um, on the interior, a lot of the elements that would be either brushed aluminum or bright um, are going to be darker plastic, um, the bezels around the vents, so just to add that, that slightly more aggressive, sinister look. The rear lip spoiler and the front air dam are also standard on the club. This car also has um, an available Brembo PDS package. So there's the Brembo brakes up front, all four calipers are red, and the forged 17-inch um, BDS wheels, as well as the side skirt extenders and the um, rear underskirt. So this is Club with the available BBS package, um, only available with the manual transmission. And then we have the GT, which is harkening back to more of a traditional grand touring level car, so more of the luxury features, leather, navigation, and some safety features I'll get into further on. Now the relationship between the club and the GT has changed a little bit. Mazda has always had kind of a good, better, best strategy for our product line. So there's always been the Sport, there's been the Touring, and there's been the Grand Touring. Now whether that's this car, Mazda 6, CX-5, et cetera, we just have that strategy carrying on throughout the product line. And what that means is whichever uh, more expensive vehicle you purchase, you have all of the features of the previous vehicle. What we want to do for the Club and the GT on the fourth gen MX-5 is more accurately kind of equip the vehicle to two different audiences. So for example, if you're a couple in your 60s, you're Kids are gone, you're finally getting that fun car, you want to go to Palm Springs, the PCH, the Catskills, whatever you do, and you walk in the dealership and you see this, this may not be the car for you. It may be a little too aggressive, maybe a little more sporty than what you're looking for. So we wanted to have this car available for people that wanted that performance, that aggressive look, and then we wanted to have a GT that actually has body color mirror caps, um, more silvery wheels, the leather interior, kind of a toned down aesthetic for um, people that want more of a traditional grand tour. So instead of being, you know, good, better, best, it's the sport and then two great models, but each one is targeting a specific group. Now in terms of the buyer, um, this is not a target, this is just reflecting who has purchased the third gen in the past. These are just demographics of, of the third gen. Now we're not really targeting this car based on specific age or income, because this is more a life stage vehicle. <clears throat> the reality of a car like this is that you just purchase it at a certain point in life. So whether you're younger and single and you don't have you know, the need for more seats, or you're at a point where the kids have left and you've got that disposable income, you're in peak earning years, and you don't need seating for seven, or it's a third car. If you're 35 and you've got two children in you know, elementary school, this may not be the car that you purchase. It just doesn't fit that particular life stage. So we know this, this is just the reality, and it's not just an MX-5 reality, it's a reality if it's a Corvette, if it's a Porsche 911, or a Cayman, or a Boxster, or a Z4, or a TT, it's just 
the reality for cars like this is that people purchase them at a certain life stage, and that means that the median age is usually hover around 50 to 55 years old if that's the point where you know you can make a purchase like this. So with the sport, um, basically male female split, married 55, 65 years old. Now when we say male female split, this is not kind of divorcees kind of going out and buying their first. You know, <laughs> Most of the people, male or female, depending on who's buying this car, is about 80% married. So it's usually couples enjoying the car together. The male female is just who fights for the keys. In terms of the club, um, when we introduced that a few years ago, that brought in a, a younger, more male um, audience, and subsequently, a slightly lower income. And then with the grand touring, what we found is that brought in a very high income. So these are median incomes, so that means it's 130. Some people are making less, some people are making significantly more to get to that um, average. And when you have that type of um, median household income, that means that not only are you looking at other cars like the Z4, which comes up, um, the TT that comes up, but you're looking at other big ticket items, big ticket lifestyle items. It's like, honey, the kids are gone, you know, lock the door, change their bedroom to like a knitting room or something, and what are we gonna do with all this extra money? Big screen TVs. Timeshare, his and her Harley Davidson, whatever it is, we're not just competing with cars at this point. When you're, when you're at a certain income and you're at a certain life stage, yes, this is one of your options, but there's also a lot of other things that you may want to do with that disposable income. Now, getting into the product structure a little bit, what's at the top in the white is uh, reflects carryover from the third gen, and then what's in red is what's been added for the fourth gen. So again, uh, Starting with the 16-inch wheels, and ABS, obviously, air conditioning, the basic stuff. But what was added now to turn this into, you know, the fourth gen cloth standard? A couple years ago, vinyl was the standard group, and you, and you had to get packages to get cloth and remote and everything else. Um, Six-speed manual moved to five-speed. LED headlights, again, something we're really excited about in this car. So just the things that you need to add to update this car. Now jumping to the club, the difference from the sport to the club, you've got 17 inch wheels. Um, again, these are the optional package wheels. Um, so I think a little over half of the cars you'll be driving today are exactly this car, this um, club with the Brembo BBS package, and then um, about a third or so are gonna be GTs. During the lunch, if you're driving a club, try to get in a GT. If you're driving a GT, try to get in the club because there are some really cool discernible differences. What we did uh, in terms of adding for the fourth gen, so the Mazda Connect infotainment system is in there now. Um, the color touchscreen display. Now the touchscreen <laughs> operates when the vehicle's not in motion. Um, we do not want you trying to find little buttons to push while you're driving this car. So the touchscreen does not function while the vehicle is moving. Um, but we have the multifunction command and control. So right there behind the gear shift, you have a nice round knob that can basically um, manage the screen for you. And there's also steering wheel control. HD radio, USB, so now there's two USB on the club and GT instead of just one on the sport. Um, smart keyless, uh, Bose system, we have a really cool Bose system we're excited about. So this is a nine speaker Bose system. On the sport, we basically have two door speakers, two tweeters in the pillars, and then in the driver's side headrest, there's two speakers for a total of six. On the Bose system, we have the two door, the two pillars, and then on each of the headrests, there's two speakers plus a subwoofer up under the footwell of the passenger compartment. Not taking away um, legroom necessarily, but just a nice place for the sound. And the point of these headrest speakers is not to have an isolated noise behind you, but it adds that ambient sound. So in order to hear that, you have to turn your head with your ear to the headrest to hear the sound isolated. But again, that's not the point. The point is to give you that overall ambient experience with the roof down at speed. Um, one little note about the smart keyless um, or the advanced keyless. Basically, the advanced keyless comes standard on the automatic and um, it's available as a package, a very long package on the manual transmission. The big difference is one is you operate the doors with the remote and click, click, open the door, and click, open the trunk. Um, the advanced keyless is one you can actually put in your pocket and you never need to take it out. You just open the door, push it in. But they all have push buttons. Now for the GT, um, again, the carryover components, also 17-inch wheels, but these are gonna be what we call dark silver that you're gonna see out there. Looks kind of like, um, like 
pencil graphite as its color. Leather trim seat upholstery carryover, uh, heated seats. There was a Bose system on the GT, but it wasn't this nine speaker system. So again, please listen to that system, enjoy the music. There's actually um, some, a Bose sampler in the car, so you can listen to that if you can't get radio reception. Um, but then what was added? Satellite, navigation, nine speakers and move seven speakers of the previous system. And these are the safety features we're really excited about in this car. The blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, adaptive front lighting, lane departure warning. These are features that not only are pretty exclusive in our competitive set, but you can't really get these standard on a $95,000 Porsche 911. So we're really excited to bring this whole suite of safety features in this price point. Now finally, um, like as I mentioned, we want to keep this car simple from a packaging standpoint. Instead of making a whole lot of different options and packages, we want to have as much of the equipment in the car as standard and just provide that overall value. So basically the only package that's available on each trim is the advanced keyless. Um, and again, like I said, the $133 option on the manual transmission is standard on the automatic. And then the um, Brembo VBS package like on that car, and that's a $3,400 package. And again, that comes with the um, Brembo brakes, the VBS wheels all around, additional arrow pieces. 